Hi, everybody. It is Monday morning, and uh, hi, everybody. It's Monday morning, May 11th. We are almost. Hi, everybody. It's Monday morning. We are one month away from being done and having summer vacation. Um, we're going to go over answers for problem 913, and then we will get into section 914 on choosing the best strategy. So number one, you were given two equations. You had to say why they were or were not in standard form. The first one is not in standard form because we want to have the x squared term followed by the x and then the constant. So we need to change the order for that one. The second one, we want the x squared, the x term, and the constant all on the same side. So we need to subtract 60x from both sides. Then we're going to go ahead and solve each of those once we've done that. So first one, we have our standard form now. I moved the negative 165x in between the constant and the x squared. I'm going to factor out a common factor first, which is 15. And that leaves me with 15 times the quantity x squared minus 11x plus 42. I don't believe there's going to be factors of 42 that are going to give me a negative 11x. So I'm going to choose between completing the square and the quadratic formula. I don't want to deal with half of an x for my completing the square, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So my a value is 1. My b value is negative 11. And my c value is 42. And the reason I'm ignoring the 15 is because this is equal to 0. So if I divide both sides by 15, I get x squared minus 11x plus 42 equals 0. So I'm going to substitute in my values. I get the opposite of negative 11 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 squared minus 4 times a1 times c42, all divided by 2 times a is 1. Go ahead and start simplifying. The opposite of negative 11 is 11, plus or minus the square root of negative 11 squared is 106, 121, minus 4 times 1 times 42 is negative 168 all over 2 times 1 is 2. And I can see right here, I'm going to have a negative number. I can't take the square root of a negative, so I have no solution. And then the second equation that we needed to solve, I noticed right off the bat that 36 and 25 are perfect squares. So I'm wondering if this is a perfect square trinomial. 6 squared, 6x six squared gives me 36x squared. 5 squared gives me 25. 6 times 5 is 30. If I make one of those values negative, it's half here. So I'm going to use my perfect trinomial square. I put in my 36x squared, my 25. 6x and 6x, 5 and 5. I need to get negative 30 on each one of those, so I'm going to make them negative. Double check it. 36x squared, negative 30x, negative 30x, positive 25. 36x squared, minus 60x, plus 25. It works. And then I just write 6x minus 5 quantity squared equals 0. Take the square root on both sides. 6x minus 5 equals 0. 
Add five to both sides, six X is five, divide by six, X is five sixths. Now, we had the option to use any strategy to solve those, but how do you decide which strategy is best? And that's what section 914 is about. So we're gonna start off with the zero product property. So with the zero product property, we need to be able to factor and then set each factor equal to zero and solve it. So if I look at this problem and I try to factor it, if I have x squared and eight, I use my diamond problem, eight x squared and six x, Factors of 8x squared that give me 6x are 2x and 4x. That works. Now, if you're looking for a little bit of a shortcut to see if you think you're going to be able to get a combination, you're just looking at multiplying your first term times your third term. The product of these two is that diagonal, and adding them together is that middle term. So I get 2x and 4x, look for our common factors, x, x, 2, and 4. We didn't have any negatives. So I get x plus 2 times x plus 4 equals 0. If I wasn't able to come up with a combination, then I know I got to try a different method. Now I'm going to solve this. X plus 2 is 0. So I get x is negative 2. Here, x plus 4 is 0. And I get x is negative 4. So x equals negative 2 or negative 4. When I'm looking at these numbers, trying to decide if it's going to be, be factorable, like I said, I may just look at, if I multiply my first term and my third term, I can fill in that diamond problem right away. Do I think I'm going to be able to come up with a combination of factors? If I have something like this one, I know right off the bat, I don't have any factors of 5 that are going to give me 8x's. 5x squared, no factors are going to add up to 8x. So I know that that's not going to be a good strategy to use the zero product property. So I'm going to look, if I have a coefficient of 1 on my x squared term, that makes that an easy piece to use in my perfect square. If my middle term is an even number, that makes it another easy piece to fill in in my perfect square. Then I can go ahead and complete the square. I know I have x plus 4 and x plus 4. That gives me 16 here. I had 5. I need 11 more in order to complete that square. So I'm going to add that to both sides. So x squared plus 8x plus 16 here is the same thing as x plus 4 quantity squared, which is now equal to 11. I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So I get x plus 4 equals the square root of 11, which now I can't get my computer, my calculator to come up. There we go. Square root of 11 is 3.316, so I'm going to round it to 3.32. But I know it can be either the positive or the negative because this value squared is positive 11. 
I can square a positive value to get the positive 11. I can square a negative value to get the positive 11. So x plus 4 equals negative 3.32. x plus 4 equals negative 3.32. Subtract 4 from both sides. I said that wrong initially. X is equal to negative 0 0.68, and X is negative 7.32. So again, if I'm looking at the original problem, and I think that I can come up with an easy combination of numbers, I've got numbers that are easy to work with, easy to factor, I'm going to try zero product property to solve my equation. If I don't think I'm going to be able to factor it, and I have a leading coefficient of one, and my x term is even, I might try completing the square. But then there are times when neither of those is going to work, and we're going to need to use our quadratic formula. Some situations where that's going to be appropriate to use are when we have a leading coefficient that's not one or not a perfect square to make our completing the square work. When we have an odd number of x's for our middle term. When we have numbers that we don't think are going to factor easily to create that middle term. Or if we have fractions or decimals for our um, A, B, and C values in that standard form. So for this one, I don't think I'm going to come up with factors of 3 and 1 that will combine to give me my 5x. 3 and negative 1. There are no factors of negative 3x squared to give me 5x's. I don't want to try to make a square with 3x squared and 5x's. That's going to be awful to do. So I'm just going to use my quadratic formula. Negative or A is 3, B is 5, C is negative 1. Substitute in the values. x equals negative B is 5, plus or minus the square root B squared is 5 squared minus 4 times a is 3 times b is negative 1, all divided by 2a, which is 3. And now we just keep simplifying. So we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 12 all divided by 6. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 37 divided by 6. The square root of 37 shoot, 37 square root is approximately 6.1 It's 6.08 divided by 6. And now we're going to split it into 2. So negative 5 plus 6.08 is 1.08 divided by 6. And negative 5 minus 6.08 is negative 11.08 divided by 6. And again, Punch those in on your calculator, keep your life easy. 1.08 divided by 6 is 0 0.18, 18 hundredths. And negative 11.08 divided by 6 is negative 1.846 repeating. So I'm going to round it off to. 1.8, negative 
So your task, you're going to have six problems. You're going to decide which strategy do you think is the most appropriate to use for each of them. And then you're going to solve each one and just match the answers to each other. If you have questions, please make sure that you are logging in and um, talking to Mr. Copland or myself during office hours. Have a good day.